I've had a bit of a um, removable floor down under here for about two and a half years uh, right here and I'm about to glue it in because now that we have the wiring in I now know what this cabinet's going to actually be so I'm going to basically run some epoxy along the top of this cleat here I'm going to put another cleat here and get this floor down and that'll enable me to put the wall in that's here and that'll be the final partition that's going into uh, to this boat and that'll allow me to form these cabinets both here and here and start to form the inside of the galley. Now this particular panel has been living in this bedroom here for about a month while we've been playing around with the wiring and it's a big one. This panel cannot leave the boat without cutting it up so it's got to go back in whether I like it or not and it goes back in there and you see it's all out of square and the reason is that that shelf there has to be trimmed once I get this floor in place, I'm going to trim this shelf or that uh, partition board that uh, forms that little bulkhead there is actually going to be trimmed to dead straight to match the uh, match the corresponding wall. And then I'll be able to put the whole lot in. And then I'll end up with this sort of effect as we walk through to the rear cabin. So I'm getting to the point where all the glassing is done in here and uh, getting very excited about that because uh, there's only so much laminating you guys can tolerate and so much that I can tolerate as well. Janet's currently up in the factory finishing off all the small parts, the hatches, the freezer lid. And that's another part. Once I get this stair in tomorrow, I'm then gonna be able to put in the freezer unit. Nothing for it, but to put it down and I'll be pretty happy. Now that's actually been peel plied. So I've given it a light sand and a uh, very, very light sand. I mean, I made this board, God, at least two or three years ago. And that's it. It was that easy. Um, so you can see here, I've got to trim that bulkhead in there, but now that is firmly in place with glue oozing out everywhere. So I'm going to do a bit of a clean up and then I'll be able to get in there and actually tab that all together tomorrow and get it finished. Today has just become one of those days where you don't ever seem to get much done. Spent all day with this stair module lifted out and as you can see there's a lot of different things to consider here we've got underneath the stair risers need to be firm and squeak free and need to be epoxied in place before i can subsequently tab over the top underneath the lip of the actual staircase where it joins the bridge deck must be secure and must be filled with epoxy so that i can then subsequently tab the top and the bridge deck together of that stair riser so that it looks like one piece all the way along. Along the floor where it actually meets the cabin sole, it needs to be integrated in. So I've got to get it almost as level as I can get it with plenty of epoxy to make sure that it's actually glued in place. And then now we have the wiring in place, I've got to make sure that's all out of the way so we don't end up with a big dollop of epoxy on our very, very expensive wiring. And the Blackwater tank is now installed. I've got my waste outlet and my salt water intake there for my air conditioning system. So there's been a hell of a lot going on down in this bowels of the boat here, right under the floor. That was two years of my life down under the floor, making sure that I've got all of that in place for today when I'm going to lock this stair module down next and I'll never have to pull it out again because I think I've lifted it up about 40 times in the last week just up down up down making sure that I've got everything underneath ready to be tabbed and some areas I simply can't get to so that means I cannot tab underneath the very main bulkhead section I need to tab it on the top so I've got to make sure that I've got the composite angle in there which effectively is as good as tabbing and then I'm going to have plenty of epoxy on that and that will then glue the staircase down. So this is all within three or four millimeters and uh, yeah, it's not easy to get things in and out when they're this close. Now I've got a problem, I can't get to my epoxy. <laughs> I should have thought that through before I lifted that out. Right. So I'm going to have to put a big bead of epoxy along here. I've got this cleat in here that's going to form part of the support underneath the stair. Along here, down along these composite angle edges I have here, all the way along here, along the floor here, 
and along that sill over there. So I've got a lot of glue to be putting down right now. The rest of it is all pretty much free of glue. And then once it's down, and a little bit over in here, and a bit over on the floor over there. So I think I can access pretty much all of that and, uh, and just lock this down and then screw it into the deck to make sure that it's solid as a rock and leave it overnight until tomorrow. Alright, I've got it in position. I need to put a bit more glue here. So along this floor here where it intersects with this um, back of the stair here, I've got to get a ton of glue in there um, before I drop it down. But that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's ready to drop down. There's nothing along here. I am going to install a bulkhead in here to stop anything from falling in there. But yeah, that's uh, plenty of glue in there. Wish me luck. <laughs> it's got to go in in one shoot. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to have a bundle of wires there that's going to be covered in crap. In fact, I think I might put this over the top like that to make sure that I don't end up that is covered in glue. And I can get to that later. shot go it'll hear it go like a brand new car door and that's how this whole boat has been get going together it's just like no banging no clanging no squeaking i love it it's perfect now it just goes to show you how important it is to actually screw and weigh things down i had this sitting here and thought it was in a perfect position and i've just added about a 35 kilo roll of um marine grade copper tinned wire that's about a thousand bucks there and and three screws and look at this now i've got to be careful i don't drill through the bridge deck i'm only drilling into the first layer of the uh of the bridge deck but look at the squeeze out so again and another thing too look at here down here on the floor when i put my weight on it look at that so that needs to be screwed down and uh, if you don't you're going to end up with potentially separation so i'm going to put a heap of screws in just to hold it in place and then tomorrow i can come and remove them not going to be an issue here i can screw stuff down here because this is all going to get sanded off and leveled out and uh yeah basically fed and uh and then ready for some flooring so progress on our electrical system is is just going so well and we have basically pulled wires into every cavity and compartment of the boat and uh, one of the final things we need to do prior to us starting to hook everything up is create a system for our alternators. Now, it's a fairly complex system that we have on our boat. We have obviously twin engines there, Yanmar shaft drive engines, and that's totally irrelevant to the electrical system, but being shaft drive, we're looking for less maintenance, no sail drive problems, simple shaft, uh, nice and easy. But the one area where you'll run into difficulty with these particular new motors are their alternator systems and their alternators essentially are not designed when they come with these engines as standard and in our case i have four valio alternators now these are apparently very good alternators but they generally only run at around 90 amps and each alternator has the potential to take away around about three to four to five horsepower from your motor. So if I'm running two alternators on each engine, which I will be, there's the potential that I'm going to be knocking that down to say 48, you know, 48 or so horsepower, which is not an issue in the grand scheme of things. Our boat was designed to take a 29 horsepower. So I think we've got plenty of power in the uh, in the engines. Where I was more concerned about was our ability to be able to charge our battery bank, our house battery bank and our start battery system efficiently and effectively so we opted to install the dual alternator system on both of the motors and uh, and they came with the alternator kits and unfortunately i lost the footage of where i installed that complete system we had to modify the engine a bit we had to move the fuel filter around a little bit and uh, and it did take quite some time but the second thing, or well, the most important thing we have to do is because we are now going to have 800 amps of lithium batteries, and I've already got the batteries, we need to 
uh, install a, an internal regulator modification kit in our Valio alternators. Now, these particular alternators luckily are catered for from Balmar. Now, Balmar is, uh, is a company that basically makes alternator regulator, external regulator systems, and they have luckily a kit. Because it's such a pop popular engine, and the alternator that comes standard with it are very popular. Uh, and this is a, a ready install kit that basically can just be simply retrofitted to these Valio alternators and turn them into essentially a Balmar uh, alternator system. And I've already done this one here. And it took me seriously five minutes. It's, it's such a quick install. And I thought I'll just do this one here in front of you as a time lapse and show you how simple it is. But essentially what we're replacing on this particular alternator is the external housing. This is the external housing or the external plastic cover. And this is essentially a throwaway now. And this is from the Valio system and the internal regulator. Now by replacing that, I've now made this capable of talking to the Balmar 618 external regulator, which I'll have on each of these alternators uh, running the house system. Now that's sort of so important. Now you can't just run two external regulators and just feed them straight into the house because uh, you're going to have run into um, field problems and the like. And, and obviously we don't want to um, overcharge our batteries and, and potentially damage the VMS or the battery management system in those batteries as well. So we've had to also purchase an item called a center fielder. Now that center fielder actually sits in the middle of the two alternators that are charging the house and creates one as a master and one as a slave. And in our case, our master, uh, we're hoping it's going to be our port alternator. We intend to wire it that way and make our starboard one our slave. And the reason why is it's actually closer to have the center fielder to our battery house bank than it is on our starboard side because our port side is where our battery system is. So nice and simple and the magic of an external regulator that we can then match the charge profile and the battery profile for our lithium battery bank uh, exactly with that regulator system uh, and take away the risk or essentially eliminate the risk of damaging our battery system and even worse, our alternator system. Because once that alternator uh, stops uh, working, you're in a whole world of hurt. Now I have four alternators. I basically have two that are going to be dedicated to the start battery system. And they'll have each have their own AGM start battery, which is a, a cranking battery. And two alternators dedicated purely to our house system. And that's a very, very big deal because lithium batteries are like hungry monsters. They just wanna keep eating and eating and eating. And, uh, and my understanding is that having two alternators is just gonna eliminate any problems. I mean, the other thing too is that alternator, as I've got right in front of me here, is really only going to deliver around about 90 amps. And the beauty of the Balmar system is it actually increases that up to more likely what the actual alternator is capable of delivering rather than what it actually does deliver. Really, really happy to got my butterfly stair module finally glued down. I'm gonna just come in and remove the screws. It's as solid as a rock. This, this thing is never gonna squeak. But what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna clean up this margin here and take all the gel coat off all the way down. Then I'll tab it to the bulkhead and make it actually part of the bulkhead because this will give the boat a lot of strength having these modules all glassed, tabbed and glued in place all the way along here. They'll be tabbing all the way through, making sure that the bulkhead remains uh, sound as well and, uh, and no chance of ever flexing or ever moving once this bulkhead's basically bonded to this module and the modules behind it. So in here, I've got this main wall and that actually goes along the back of the galley. And then I also have the freezer compartment uh, wall, which is basically the cabinetry for the freezer has to go in place. And I can actually get that in now. And that's really pleasing because that means once I get the freezer unit that Janet spent a lot of time sanding up and polishing, I can get that resprayed and put back into place and then we can start to form that. I've actually ordered an isotherm freezer plate and a compressor to drive it. It's a 12 volt compressor, it's air cooled. It's not water cooled freezer. So it will actually uh, be able to be installed almost straight away as soon as I get this cabinetry finished. So there's a lot of stuff in here that can now go back 
in place along here. <laughs> this is where you find that nothing fits. After you actually glue things in, you then have to go back and trim because everything's loose. So very importantly, I'm going to put this one in place. Now this has a peel ply on the back of it, so I need to remove this prior to me gluing it all in. Most of it. We're currently in a blackout here at the moment, so I can't do any cutting, any grinding, any, anything with tools other than uh, by hand. I'm not going to hand sand this. But down in the back here of the freezer, I have to allow room for a compressor down in the bottom here. Most of it can be trimmed off. In fact, I'm going to trim off that edge there, and then I'm going to tab that down to the floor there before I put this panel in place. The compressor will be here. I'm going to have to put an access hatch into the bottom here so I can get to the compressor. I don't want to have to lift the whole freezer unit out to get that compressor. I'd like a little door in there. I can check any condensation buildup and obviously evaporation condensation. What I may do is do a door here with a vent in it, and then the vent and the door are the same unit, and then I can be able to get in behind there. I don't need anything else other than perhaps a drain to drain down into either into the bilge or perhaps into my black water tank because the tank's directly below it. If I could drain it into that, that's a sort of a good thing. I don't really want condensate drains going into the bilge because that means I'll have a wet bilge and uh, I really don't want to have a wet bilge at all. I know we're going to get some water in there, but I want to know it's coming from the ocean, not from my evaporating um, compressor on the freezer or from the freezer itself. I'd rather have dry bilges than have all the water go into the black water tank, which I can then see the level rise and just pump it out. Right, we've got power back, that means I can cut. Janet gave me a haircut this morning. <laughs> She's hilarious when she cuts my hair, she gets so stressed and a little bit angry. But I can sort of understand that because I'm trying to tell her how to do it. I've never cut hair in my life. I won't, I'm not even allowed to go near Lexi. If I cut Lexi's hair, I get divorced. But uh, yeah, she did a good job. I was desperate. I was getting epoxy in it. I had a big dollop of epoxy in it yesterday. But uh, yeah, back to work. might have boxed myself in here you can see here the problem i've got is where it actually intersects with the stair down there and um, once i get it past that curve it should just slide into place i'm saying should but there's no guarantees in this game but uh, we'll see how i can get it to fit i'm a bit worried about it actually now you can see here i've got a, a bit of a problem with this curve of the stair is actually blocking it but I think I think it'll bend enough I mean it's pretty rigid but I think it'll bend enough just to get it round and then it'll slide into place So going along with my theme of try and get as much storage space as possible without sacrificing living space, but also want living space as well. So, but you can't survive without good storage space. And we're not even putting too much weight in here, but I've got actually two covered spaces in here. One here in the back cabin and another one here, which is actually underneath the galley. So these areas here, now the bottom of it has to be accessible for the wiring and there'll be a shelf down the bottom there, uh, around about two thirds of the way down there, and basically on the other side as well, that'll be dedicated just for wiring runs and for accessing uh, storage of small items, I guess, related to the boat. But the rest needs to be related to uh, possibly the galley, possibly safety equipment, who knows. But uh, this area here is going to be pretty essential bit of storage space. And the good thing is that this one here is actually accessible without having to enter the stern cabin and uh, obviously if people are asleep you still want to be able to get in there and it is separate to the other one because there's a bulkhead in between 